Berserk, Volume 8. Wow, this is a really good, really good volume. Of course, it picks up right, uh, right in, in the middle of the battle for, uh, there's this pivotal battle which legends say that, uh, legends, but legends of the area where they fought this unsiegeable, this unpregnable castle, uh, or fort as it were, uh, which they do succeed. There was a great, fantastic battle there. Guts takes down the leader of the special purple rhino knights, or they have these very fantastical and sometimes ridiculous names for these knight guilds or groups or brotherhood of knights or what do you want to call it. I found this as a really good issue. It has both action in the beginning and very introspective um, stuff in the, in, in the middle and near the end and where Guts really sees that Griffith uses him in his own ways, and it really starts off where uh, they win the battle. They are sent to this uh, banquet ball uh, where uh, Griffith is assassinated or staged, assassinated by the queen, which she got a lackey to put poison in his wine, and he pretends to be dead, and, that, and uh, he gets her back by burning down the house. And it was burning down the place of their meetings and where she had a relationship with the king's brother. He was Duke. Duke, the title, not my friend. Um, which they had a relationship, and it was just... You get you, you can understand it was sympathetic because Guts assassinated him and accidentally assassinated uh, his son. That really... Uh, because he never killed a child before, and that really tore him up inside, and really saw that, am I as bad as Zod, or, uh, or in that type of eyes, in which, have I become a monster? It really deals deep in both, uh, this is very much a low fantasy that deals with internal turmoil and, uh, character issues, and my radio is cutting out. i got Howard Stern on the background in the kitchen. Uh, ignore that if you can. But I really did feel for Guts in this, in uh, which that he is delegated to the tasks of Hitman and doing the dirty work and clean-up duty for Griffith, something that the public eye doesn't want to see, you know, helps him keep his image squeaky clean for the people of uh, the, the, the kingdom that they're, uh, they're in. Which I like that, and you feel sorry for Guts. Though there's a badass moment where he's wearing this type red maged feather hat and he has his cape and sword and just looks awesome on him. <laughs> she only wears it once but it's worth it. And uh, and uh, you can see how manipulative uh, Griffith can get to get his way. And this is built more upon later on in volumes. I've read this before and I'm rereading it. And I can see more detail in the art and stuff and understand it far more. Um, and here Guts is not not so much having guilty conscience, but not envious either, but he doesn't want to be looked down upon. He wants to have... He wants to make something for himself, because he was this tool used by Griffith. And, quote, he's kind of Griffith's slave in a way, which he, in that first volume, he won that battle... Or not first volume, the third volume, I believe it was, in which uh, Griffith be beat Guts in a duel... And we have that again, which Guts wins and buys his freedom. And there's very much so, uh, sorrow goodbyes and stuff like this, in which he is freed and he must make his own path and carve his own destiny by his own will, and he wants to earn it for himself. And I can respect that, because somebody, Guts, who grew up who had very much little and was brought into a violent life, he wants to make something for himself and such. With Griffith, we're given next to no backstory. He's always been this uh, Mary Sue type character. Not not entirely, but with a sinister edge to it, you know. Very much inspired and can inspire and empower people around him. And uh, Guts is the opposite. He's this gruff loner 
who wants to be left alone and do his own thing, but he is entangled by this motley crew of hawks who have managed from from nothing to become this granted of the a uh, granted new title and they all become knights and they've made it but uh, Griffith's insatiable hunger will destroy him down the road as we will see because this is all to told backwards from volume 3 and onward 1 and 2 um, um, is present day and this is all the past this is the problem with that telling stuff backwards there's not really that much drama to the character because we know he's going to live unless they do kill him it's Maui's word birth which they don't do in here but I, I find that you know it's it's tricky we know what's already going to happen in prequels and stuff like that um I recommend this I can't this is still one of my favorite mangas of all time it is the art scourge as a storytelling the low fantasy aspect just everything encompasses what I love about uh, about uh, storytelling and reading just all around great book you gotta check it out Berserk Volume 8 can't give it higher may the forces of darkness begin to confuse on way to your house goodbye